Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So the new year is upon us and there are a lot of exciting things to look forward to. It's an Olympic year for starters, which is great. And of course, the USA has a major election coming up in November, which will be observed with great global interest. And also this year is the year I swear that I will finally be offering merchandise. So if you have any suggestions as to what you'd like in terms of t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and slogans or sayings that you've noticed I say and you think would look a bit cool, then please let me know in the comment section. Any inspiration you can give me, I would very much appreciate. So one characteristic of most people's New Year's celebrations is making New Year's resolutions. These tend to be things like lose weight, save money, stress less. Mine actually this year is going to be to read more novels. But while we all make these resolutions, keeping them is a whole nother matter. I mean, full disclosure, I've made that resolution to read more novels for three years in a row now, but I'm determined to keep it this year. And I'm sure most of you can relate to that thought process. It's all about self-improvement. And speaking of self-improvement, there is a group of people that I'm sure we can all agree are in need of a lot of self-improvement. I talk about them quite a bit on my channel and I have made a number of videos addressing their flaws, foibles and hypocrisy. And of course, I'm talking about progressives. <laughs> Now I say progressives with a healthy dose of cynicism because while they claim to be all about progressive attitudes and progressive beliefs, they actually have a lot of beliefs and attitudes that are very regressive, like separating people into racial groups and defining them first and foremost by their skin color. I mean, that's pretty regressive. So is the suggestion that women should be wrapped in cotton wool lest the behavior of men offend or threaten them. I mean, that's very regressive or the suggestion that gay people be judged first and foremost by their sexuality, which is something the early gay lobby was fighting against. I mean, that's quite regressive. Hence the rather apt nickname they've earned, the regressive left. As such, and in the spirit of the new year, I have thought of three New Year's resolutions for the regressive progressives out there. I mean, it's all very well for me to criticize, but nobody is inspired to change and to improve by being lectured. Perhaps it's time to try some, you know, positive critique. Tell me I'm good. Resolution number one, stop taking everything so personally. That's one of the big things that separates the regressive left from conservatives. Progressivism is based on a combination of self-righteousness and fear. They label that self-righteousness empathy and are always telling people to be empathetic and applauding themselves for sowing such wonderful empathy and compassion and tolerance to people who apparently need it. However, they very, very quickly reveal themselves to be anything but empathetic, compassionate and tolerant when they encounter someone with a different opinion to theirs or when someone on their own side accidentally steps beyond the party line. Then they become abusive, aggressive little thugs and go out of their way to belittle and humiliate their target into submission as if the subject needs to somehow atone for the terrible mortal sin of disagreeing with the progressive mantra. The power of Christ compels you. Does it, Jay? The power of Christ compels you. Is the power of Christ compelling me? That's why self-righteousness is an accurate descriptor. Being self-righteous involves both pleasantries and rage. Pleasantries directed at those within the group and rage at those outside it. You know, kind of like Stalin and Mao and every other dictator ever. The fear component comes into it in the fact that they have tricked themselves into believing that we in the West are living in one of the most dangerous, unequal times in human history, and that therefore radical drastic action is needed to protect supposedly vulnerable groups from the evils of the big bad patriarchal oppressors that apparently permeate society. Now, of course, none of that is true. But if you look at the world through the lens through which they view it, which is a Marxist lens, their arguments make total sense and are easy to convey by appealing to emotion and people's better natures. That's why young people with little life experience and few financial responsibilities are so easily duped by them. They're idealistic and want to do good and also have the luxury of being able to view the world purely through the prism of identity rather than paying the bills or holding down a dreary nine to five job. 
Remember, according to a 2018 study called Hidden Tribes, the regressive left is overwhelmingly white, most likely to have a college degree, and most likely to be earning over $100,000 US dollars a year. They are generally very privileged people pretending to be oppressed or to stand with the allegedly oppressed. It is very fashionable to be a victim or an ally. Therefore, these people can afford to cast aside inconvenient facts and live their lives as dictated by their feelings. This causes them to confuse the anxiety we all feel when we are potentially proved wrong with being offended or made to feel unsafe. It's also why they avoid consuming opposing viewpoints. They believe the healthy discomfort humans feel when their opinions are challenged is somehow harmful and to be avoided. In short, they take everything very, very personally. It's why they equate reasoned academic criticism with personal attacks and why they can quite happily justify personally attacking someone as intellectual critique. You are rude and mean and sloppy and frizzy. I don't like you at all. Feminists take this to the next level with the slogan, the personal is political, a saying popularized in the 70s which expressed a common belief that the personal experiences of women are rooted in their political situation and gender inequality. Ugh. Now look, I feel really sorry for progressives living in that kind of universe. I mean, for one, it denies them any kind of opportunity for self-development or learning, and also it causes a huge amount of anxiety over what they think and do and say. So resolution number one for progressives, stop taking everything to heart. It's not healthy and not necessary. As the saying goes, it ain't personal, it's politics. Resolution number two, stop accusing conservatives of doing what you yourselves are doing. I'm sure most of us have come across the saying, accuse the other side of that which you are guilty. The origin of this phrase is contentions, but it is a perfect descriptor for the modus operandi of the regressive left. They relentlessly accuse conservatives of stuff they themselves do, and then they play the wounded card when that is pointed out to them. For example, we've all heard progressives talking about how divisive politics is nowadays, and how divisive conservatives are, and how divisive their rhetoric is, and how divisive Trump is. The problem is, it's they who are dividing society because of how deeply personal they have made politics. Not only that, identity politics and intersectionality, which is the core of progressive leftist thinking, is by its very nature divisive. It pits different societal groups against each other in a sort of oppression Olympics to see who is the most allegedly hard done by, and also presents them with a common enemy, that is, the straight white man, to unite against whenever there is a tiff within the ranks and they will never see it. They will never see their hypocrisy. Honestly, I remember after the 2016 election, just after Trump had won, progressives were walking around in a dismayed daze, saying how suddenly everyone was so divided and that there was this sudden division in politics. And I remember thinking, um, no, everyone has always hated you. It's just now people finally have the guts to say so. And yet they accuse conservatives of being divisive. I mean, that's bizarre are because conservatives believe in individualism and literally do not care about identity groups. We treat everyone the same in our interactions with them, regardless of skin color, gender, sexual orientation, etc., and believe we're all united by our common humanity. That is the opposite of divisive. So to all progressives, if you want to improve and you want people to like you, make an effort in 2020 to stop accusing other people of your own sins. That would make politics a much cleaner landscape. Please! Resolution number three, stop calling everyone who disagrees with you some shade of bigot. Racist, sexist, bigot, misogynist, homophobe, ignorant, uneducated, Islamophobic, transphobic, alt-right, white supremacist, fascist, patriarchy, white privilege, male privilege, oppression, intersectionality, ableist, Russian bot! We are all well aware that the go-to tactic of the regressive left is to personally insult their opposition. They will never, ever, ever engage in any kind of academic debate with conservatives. They just go straight to the racist, sexist, homophobic bigot card. Now, this is for a few reasons. First, they believe conservatives are bad people. As the saying goes, the right think the left are naive, but the left think the right are evil. And why would anyone try to reason with evil? Humans try to vanquish evil because evil can't be reasoned with. That's how leftists have characterized conservatives. They are very, very sure that they, the progressives, are the warriors for good and that right-wingers are evil people who need to be intimidated into silence. 
The best way to do that in modern society is via the internet. That's why you see all that online dogpiling. Destroying someone's reputation and undermining their confidence is a very good way to shut someone up. The regressive left thinks they're teaching conservatives a lesson when they do this. I know this because they've tried to do it to me multiple times on Twitter and they are perfectly happy to admit it is a coordinated effort. If you're authentically uplifted by this effort, well, you poor thing. Obviously it hasn't worked though. The second reason they do this is because they don't have any kind of factual basis for their arguments. Everything they believe is based on feelings and only half the story. That's why it's so easy to get them in a debate and why they never actually want to take conservatives on intellectually. It's much easier to demonize people than risk being academically trounced by them. It's also straight out of Saul Alinsky's rules for radicals, rule number 13 to be precise, which is pick the target, freeze it, personalize it and polarize it. Cut off the support network and isolate the target from sympathy. Go after people and not institutions. People hurt faster than institutions. Pretty sinister stuff, but absolutely characteristic of the way the regressive left operates. Another reason they do this is because it protects them from the anxiety of being wrong. And as I mentioned earlier, they confuse this healthy doubt with being offended or feeling unsafe. So demonizing your opponent rather than engaging with them is just a convenient way of avoiding any kind of intellectual rigor or uncomfortable soul searching by retreating into echo chambers where everyone very comfortingly tells you you're right. And as for accusing conservatives of retreating into echo chambers as well, don't even go there. The majority of journalists are left-wing. There is a very interesting article by Politico, which is a left-leaning website, about the leftist media bubble. If you want the full details, I have included it in the video description. Trump gets 92% negative media coverage, according to the Media Research Center, and every A-list celebrity attempts to be a left-wing influencer. Leftist dogma is all the way through popular culture. As such, conservatives couldn't avoid left-wing opinion if we tried. We have to actively search for right-leaning news and commentary sources, which are usually outside of the mainstream media, just to get a different perspective. This is likely why conservatives are so good at debating progressives. We are very aware of their arguments and so know exactly how to counter them. The reverse is just simply not true. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh your opinion, man. It's also pertinent to note here that for all the personal attacks regressive leftists launch at their opponents, they are useless at receiving them. They can dish it out, but they can't take it because they are so sure they are correct and that their enemies are wrong and evil, that they feel they're justified in saying and doing anything they want to them, no matter how vicious. However, the minute someone throws it back at them in retaliation, they scream and cry and play the victim because how dare anyone talk back to them, the supreme enlightened moral class. Plus, considering they spend so much time in these echo chambers, bending over backwards not to offend or contradict anyone, they have no resilience to criticism or taunts, none at all. They are simply not used to it because they never have to defend themselves. Conservatives, on the other hand, are constantly being called names and dogpiled and always having to defend themselves. We are forged in fire. That's why we retaliate so sparingly. We don't usually feel the need because we don't care that much. But when we do retaliate, boy, do we make it count. Darling, sit down. When was the last time you could wear horizontal stripes? Ooh, burn! So, to progressives, how about in 2020 you switch your strategy up and actually attempt to engage intellectually with your political opponents? You might learn something and you might find what they say interesting and you may even be able to strengthen your own arguments and thus improve your cause. How does that sound? Well, there you have it. My three New Year's resolutions for progressives. I'm sure the progressives will not keep them, but hey, we live in hope. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.